You're listening to Disobedient Media Radio. Up next, we have Elizabeth Voss. WikiLeaks calls out Democratic Party and media hacks who threatened Assange. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Voss, and I write with Disobedient Media. Today, we published an article covering the DNC fraud lawsuit being tre- tweeted by Trump, as well as the mainstream media breaking their blackout on the subject that has been going on for months. Caitlin Johnstone wrote a very good article discussing the fact that the mainstream media has not been covering this, and that was back in April. So that changed today after uh, Donald Trump tweeted in basically in support of the lawsuit while also calling Sanders crazy. So that was interesting in itself. Uh, CNN, Was- the Washington Post, the New York Daily Post, a lot of your typical legacy media outlets picked up on the story after he tweeted, which was interesting because they specifically because they had chosen to not comment on a whole lot of other developments that have happened over the months in this story. So, for example, Disobedient Media, we've previous, previously covered things like the attorneys in the case, Jared and Elizabeth Beck, having re- received a number of disturbing phone calls. The co-counsel received some an interesting phone call, one of which was traced to a number which uh, was registered to W. Austin Schultz's office in Florida. And although the defense in the case denied that it had anything to do with her office and pointed out that the office itself was under repairs, so it was not open in their view, there hasn't, it brought up a lot of significant questions. And one of them was the death of Seth Rich, as well as the death of Sean Lucas, who was a process server for the Becks. It's also, uh, they also have discussed the mysterious death of uh, US, one of the U.S. District Atter- Assistant U.S. District Attorneys, Barrington Wisenot Jr. So there are all these really, really important things that are connected to this case, um, you know, one of which is Seth Rich, but also there is the fact that in response to these phone calls and in response to what they see as some mysterious deaths that are connected to this case, the Vex filed a motion seeking protection recently, and that was denied, but they specifically cited these deaths when they filed that motion. And so the reason I'm speaking about that now is because it's very, very interesting to see uh, outlets like CNN and the Washington Post ignoring those developments, ignoring the connection to Seth Rich, ignoring all of the very, very important questions this case has brought up and ignoring the DNC's defense of the corruption in the Democratic Party, where their defense counsel literally stated during the litigation that the Democratic Party did not legally have to abide by its neutrality charter, that it could just support whichever candidate it wanted to despite the fact that the charter says that they must be neutral and despite the fact that many people donated to the DNC and the Democratic Party assuming that they would abide by their charter and remain neutral and support neither candidate over the other. Obviously that's not what happened and not only do they acknowledge that but they don't even, they are, instead of arguing that that is not what happened, they're arguing that they have the right to do that. So anyway, these things were, in my view, significantly ignored, and other people have noticed that. So it is then interesting to see that they have spoken about this instance with Trump after ignoring it, this the entire story for months And then, because of Trump having tweeted about it, because it was President Trump who tweeted, they used the story, the uh, the CNN article, the Washington Post article, used the story specifically to discuss what else, to discuss the Trump-Russia alleged collusion, which has nothing to do with the DNC case, and it's really a dead horse. Nobody really wants to hear about this anymore. There's no new information. You know, all they do is quote unverified claims. They do not 
have any evidence that has been verified of any type of significant collusion. And most people, whether they are Democrat or Republican or Independent or whatever other variety of political association, most people do not care about Russia. And most people don't care about Trump colluding with Russia. I'm not saying nobody cares, but a lot of people don't. A lot of people are more concerned about their water not being polluted by fracking, or they are concerned about Flint's water supply, or they are concerned about the economy, or they are concerned about health care. There are a hundred more important things that people are concerned about on a day-to-day basis than the Russia issue. So the fact that you would take, you would, that the legacy media has been silent on this for so long, and then decided to speak about it only to use it as a vehicle to revive the Russian dead horse. It it says a lot about the disconnect between the American legacy media and the public that it is pretending to give a damn about. So I thought that was interesting. And I, I am glad that the DNC lawsuit and their, the DNC lawsuit attorneys and their case has gotten a little bit of mainstream recognition today, and I think it's a shame that it wasn't talked about in more detail. I think it's a shame that it wasn't talk, spoken about in context, and I think it's a shame that it was almost ignored in the articles that were professing to write about it. So, and we will, at Disability Media, we'll, we will be continuing to cover the DNC lawsuit as it develops, we have previously written about the phone calls that the Becks and their, uh, their co-counsel received. We've talked about the death of Sean Lucas. We've talked about Seth Rich. We've talked about the motion the Becks filed seeking protection, which was eventually denied. But we've talked about the significance of all of these things and the interconnections between them. And we hope that we're giving a decent amount of coverage to this very, very important issue. So stay tuned, check back with us, and thank you. You've been listening to Disobedient Media Radio. That was Elizabeth Voss with WikiLeaks calls out Democratic Party and media hacks who threatened Assange. This is something new we're trying, so be sure to let us know what you think in the comments below, here at the video, or over at the blog at disobedientmedia.com. If you're looking for the story that Elizabeth is talking about, be sure to check out the description of this video. You'll find the link right there where you can definitely go learn more. While you're there, have a good look around and discover why WikiLeaks Task Force recently tweeted screenshots of our articles. Our investigative journalism runs deep and hits hard, so be sure to check back often. Go ahead, bookmark the blog, and maybe follow us on Twitter at Disobedient News. My name is Rob Colbert. Thanks for listening. This is Disobedient Media Radio.